Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is truly incredible. Let me know in the comments what you got going on today because I love reading about your beautiful faces. I'm just spending some time with my baby mangrove snakes. These things are doing so well. We really figured out how to kind of dial in the baby mangroves. They are absolutely doing wonderful. This is just one of the babies here that's just starting to get that really adult color in. And here's another little baby and this is how we keep stuff with babies. We want to get it kind of a simple setup just for them to get in going and then we'll eventually move them into something a little bit different and what we basically do is we just have a moist box in here we have a little lid so they feel comfortable they can hide and stuff like that and have back heat and so on like that again they do really wonderful at this size and mangrove snakes are definitely becoming one of my favorite snakes there's no doubt about it oh this one's got a little shed right here that is awesome and by the way remember the purple one that we hatched out a while ago that was actually siblings to this clutch unfortunately i hate to say it guys it just didn't make it i mean it was really weak as soon as it was born didn't know if it was ever going to make didn't start eating we did the best we possibly could do but unfortunately we didn't so we don't know if it was a t positive or maybe it was just a congenital issue where it just hatched out and wasn't healthy to begin with and just had a little bit of lack of pigment i'm not 100 percent sure but we'll breed that same pair again this year and hopefully maybe we can prove that out nevertheless uh mangrove snakes are absolutely wonderful it's pretty weird we actually start at eight o'clock in the morning here it's like after 10 o'clock or something like that and i don't know where eric has been looking for him for a while i'm going to see if mary knows where he is Huh, Mary's not here either. It's really weird, they're really extremely reliable. I'll see if Beth knows where they're at. Hey Beth, have you yes. heard from Eric and Mary? They're not here. You know, I did reach out because they weren't here yet and I was worried. Apparently their pond sprung several leaks. What? It's not just the poke, it's like tears. And oh they've gosh. got 150 gallons of pond water dipping out into their basement. All right, well, I'll give them a call. All right, cool. Yeah. Thanks, 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 thanks. All right, guys, I'm just going to call Eric so I know what the heck is going on. I tell you, it's always something with these guys. Hey, Eric, you there? Oh, yeah, what's up, man? What's going on, dude? I heard you had an issue in your basement or something? Not good. What happened? Fish punctured a hole in the pond. Do you need I'm, do you need help? Do you want us to come come I'm and help or finishing up right now. Hopefully this patch will hold. I'm just wrapping up. I vacuumed up all the water, got everything dry. As long as this patch holds for another ten minutes, I think we're okay for the moment. Okay. Jeez. All right. Well, all right, I'll, I wanna hear all about this when you come in, alright? Alright, man. Alright, all good right. all right, good Bye. luck, man. Alright, good luck. Jeez, unbelievable. That's the problem with having stuff like ponds in your basement. Um, I, th th those guys are nuts. Let's check out the ball pythons and just get a little bit of a breeding update. This particular female here is actually a chocolate kingspin. So it's a chocolate, it's a spider, and it's a pinstripe. So it's being bred to a banana chocolate, which could potentially produce that Barney ball python that I've been talking about. We'll see what happens, but uh, this girl has definitely been bred a few times, so hopefully she's well on her way. And this girl here is actually a pretty interesting animal. It's just a cine het for paint ball python. Now the paint used to be considered an incomplete dominant, meaning that the, the het version that looks slightly different, actually would produce the super paints. Now they've actually really reclassified them as recessive because really the head paint was a visual heterozygous. It really wasn't a incomplete dominant animal. Don't want to confuse you guys too much. Regardless, this is bred to a pinstripe, red stripe, yellow belly. So I'm really interested to see how the red stripe interacts with the paint stuff, as well as the yellow belly and pinstripe should add some layers to it. This next girl here isn't necessarily a super pretty girl, but she's got some great genetics. This is actually a super lorry pinstripe ball python. Interesting how the pinstripe really changed and blew out all of the pattern and stuff like that. I'm actually breeding this to an extreme gene banana ball python because I think that the banana and the lorry stuff's really cool because darker animals are really cool in banana and then you get that extreme gene stuff in there and that should be pretty wicked. There's something about genetic stripes. It's a recessive mutation that I've just always loved. You know, it was kind of an early mutation and maybe that's why I love them so much is because they've been around since the early days. The first one I bought was actually like 
$30,000. Now they're just like 150 bucks or something like that. But this is actually being bred to a banana G-stripe. And the banana G-stripe stuff is amazing. So everything's gonna be genetic stripe. And about half of them are gonna be banana G-stripes. So uh, again, beautiful animal stripe-wise. You get the banana into it, absolutely stunning. So hopefully this girl looks like she's well on her way and they've been breeding pretty good. And just take a look at how many times she's been bred already. One, two, three, four, five times already. And we're just in the middle of January. So that's really good. Because again, I talked to you guys about how you want to get breeding. And then you want to get follicle growth. And then you want to get food into them. And uh, she's done all the three things. So I'm pretty sure she's going to have a clutch of eggs not too long from now. This is a pretty cool animal here. This is actually a pastel bongo ball python. Now I don't work with a lot of the bongo stuff. It's an incomplete dominant. So I've only got a few animals in that gene. And this one's actually being bred to a spider super super stripe, yellow belly, red stripe. So entering that bongo and pastel into that, that's gonna be some pretty amazing animals that could potentially be produced. And hopefully I can really kind of grow my bongo group because it does do some pretty interesting things when it comes to the color palette and pattern palette. And then this black pastel lesser is actually getting bred to that same male, the spider, red stripe, yellow belly, super stripe. So it's pretty cool when you start getting those animals into lesser again. Now we're gonna have black pastel in there. And uh, again, these are things that are not only gonna look cool right now, now, but I think like three, four years from now, when I can then breed them back and get some more super striped stuff with all those genes mixed in, it could be a pretty stunning animal. And that's how I've always talked about that living art, right? You have to grow for the future. And sometimes you're breeding animals today that you're not gonna see the results for for four, five, six, seven years. And a lot of the young males are just starting to really turn on, which is good because it does get a little bit stressful in the beginning of the season. You need that breeding to help the follicle growth growing. And in the beginning of the year, oftentimes those young males don't wanna breed. And so I was getting a little stressed out. This is actually a spied ball python, which is a spider pied. You can see just the head pattern. For whatever reason, when you get a spider pied, what they call spies, it's just the head pattern, and then the rest is all white, which is pretty cool. Now, it's actually being bred to the albino pied male, and again, he's a first-time breeder, and he just started breeding. So, although this girl is definitely on the small side for breeding, I have a feeling if we can keep putting weight on her, which she's been eating really good, she may be able to go later this summer. All in all, as I'm walking through, there's been more breeding signs on all these pink tags. What we want to have is every single pink tag to have a breeding sign on it. Right now, we're probably at about 40%, so we have a ways to go, but we're progressing pretty well, so I'll just keep you guys updated, and hopefully we'll have a banger of a year. What happened, man? Dude, it's not a good day for the oh chamber. Is it on the side? Yeah, it's underneath that mat. Oh my god. Okay, so I just got this patch on. Uh, I'm really hoping it'll hold. So we'll see, but as you can tell here, let's walk around. Oh my gosh. Not a good thing to wake up to. I got all this vacuumed up and clean. It's still a little wet back there, but what can you do? Pool ponds, what a blast. Oh my gosh, are you guys we all set up now or what? Temporarily. Yeah. Hopefully Tempor the patch holds and we're here at work. Oh my so gosh, we'll you're going to get home and there's going to be like 3,000 gallons of water oh on the floor. God. Oh so my God. So it realistically, probably 100 gallons because now that I look at it, it's like six inches of water. I think it's like 150. Yeah, oh my something like that, 100, 150. Leaked out. We went down because we go down every morning, turn all the lights on, check on the animals before we leave, and thank God. There's water everywhere. We vacuumed it all up. It's dry. Oh my God. And then my brother calls me on the way here. He's waiting in the line. Someone ripped his front bumper off. Yeah. Oh just, my God, it's just one of those just days. Just one of those days. All right, well, let's just one of those days. It's really cold. It's really cold. I mentioned yesterday that there was a chance we might be putting off the install tell the 10th instead of the third. Well, sure enough, got confirmation today. It is gonna be the 10th. The third just doesn't work. I'll explain more about it later. It just came down to really being able to make sure that everything was ready to go down at Universal Rock. So anyone that was planning on traveling in on the third, I am so sorry, it's gonna be the 10th. We're gonna be sending an email to everyone to try to make sure that we have everything squared away. But now the 10th is absolutely the date. And that means that right now, tentatively, I'm gonna say the open of the Reptarium the second week of March. I'm gonna fill you guys in more on that in the future, but right now I'm thinking the second week of March is gonna be our grand opening. So if you guys are thinking about coming and hanging out the Reptarium, second week of March, make your plans. Uh, we'll have a big party here at the new Reptarium.
Hey Bells, how you doing baby? I know you coming up to say hi to me. I haven't seen you yet today. So she is still absolutely one of the most amazing animals. And even though Diddy and Dixie are doing really well and you can see she's just shedding off just a little bit right there. Come on little monkey. It is so unbelievable to have the relationship with a lizard like this where she'll just come up and say, hey dad, what's going on? It's like she misses me every time I come to the cage. I love Bella so much. Take a look at this, guys. You know, the thing that's interesting about these Amazon tree boas is they don't spend a ton of time up in the trees in these displays. So it's really cool when I see Lucky actually branching like this, looking so amazing. He's just kind of on the hunt right now or just kind of hanging out. I'm not sure. Looks absolutely incredible. Love it. Not going to get close enough for him to bite me because I prefer that not to happen. But he looks amazing. I wish he always stood like this. Be such a better display. But oftentimes, he's just hiding down on the ground right there. But Lucky, you're looking beautiful today. It's black and white. It was in writing. All, all things. All things you wrote needed. it. All things think. needed. That doesn't sound like me. You wrote it. You that does not sound like me. All you need is a I don't remember. Do you, 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 you have proof of this? Do you have proof? The ad set. I'll pull it back up off indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because I still have it running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. That's right, because Beth, this is the thing. She didn't see the I mean, video yet. Right here. I went to. Uh, I went. Oh, it's because the candy's low. Brian, Brian, Brian. Damn it. Our job security is getting really low. The candy. <laughs> get some candy. That was, that was a good one. Oh, did you hear what happened to Eric today? Oh no, what happened? You didn't what? tell him yet. Dude, what? All the little creatures went for a swim. That's all we're gonna say. I'm gonna say big fish. Big fish. Big problems. Huh? What do you think happened? Big fish problems. Big fish big problem. Let's just put this There's way. a hole in the pond. Yeah, there's, there's a hole, a hole in, in the pond. pond. Eric, pond? Was, Eric was trying to make Noah's Ark in his basement. In his basement. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two of everything. Two okay. of everything. Oh, and it washed no. away. You know yeah. the crappy part is the leak was behind the pond so you walk down and everything's good and then I walked out no. And then there's water coming across oh. the middle of the basement. Isn't it the oh, worst God. feeling when you see the water? Like, where is this coming yeah, from? Yeah, because I have like 500 fish tanks down there. So I'm oh, running God. around looking. I'm like, oh, that pond's pretty low. It was the biggest low. one? It was the big pond. Oh. Don't worry, Hamburglar's okay, though. He's doing good. Oh, oh my God. God. And the problem is, the hole's so far at the bottom. No. If the patch doesn't hold, and you we're just, having a you fish fry. Flex -side sealed it. Dude, flex seal. I don't know what that guy's name is. He saved my Tony, fish's life. I think. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you can whatever flex seal. Yeah, I'm gonna shout We should make out. a boat. We should make a boat. We really out of should. Flex seal and flex see if it works. Boat. Have you or ever watched a, a compilation of the crazy stuff he does? He turned a freaking truck into a submarine. Once again, feels, responsible feels pet sick. keeping with Eric <laughs> Chambers. <laughs> So Ivy has basically digested that last meal of a pig. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. It was the same size pig as the last time, but it took her a few extra days. So three days into it, she still had a huge lump and I was kind of stressing out like, what is going on? Why is this digesting? Now she looks completely good. Definitely getting unbelievable size to her. I mean, just take a look at the size of that animal. I mean, again, she's probably twice as thick as she was when we got her and she's growing like a weed. I love it and again, just another month from now, she's gonna go in her new enclosure. I cannot wait to see how she does it. You know, the interesting thing is, is that is she gonna spend all her time in the water? Is she gonna be on land? Is she gonna split the time? I don't know what she's gonna do. I cannot wait to get her into this new environment. If you guys enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? We have a podcast. You can subscribe to it over here called Checking In. Right here, you can roll through a bunch of videos on this channel, or vlogs that you may like. Over here, you can hit the subscribe button for this vlog channel. Turn the post notification on for both of them if you don't mind. Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone. I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.